Well, good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? It's good to be in God's house, amen? Amen. Beats the best hospital. Hey, a couple things before we jump into the message today. Um, those of you watching from the Eternal Life Network and the Isaac Net Te Television Network, we're really glad to have you watching all over, all over many countries right now. Um, in Florida, we know that we had a hurricane that hit, and a lot of the West Coast is just, just destroyed and devastated. And then, unfortunately, it went to Georgia and Tennessee and North Carolina. I heard it impacted Ohio, Kentucky, South Carolina. I mean, this storm was so far reaching. And maybe you've seen pictures like I have. My heart, my heart's broken. I'm just, I, I just want to cry. I just, and then there's people that have died, people that are missing. I'm on Facebook and people are saying, can you please help me find people? And oh, I can't just read that stuff without it impacting me. It just, it just moves me to tears and emo deep emotion. And it may perhaps trigger feelings of helplessness, but I got to tell you, Prayer is powerful, and that's how we combat feelings of hopelessness, we pray. And so I thought it would be so appropriate that we take a portion of our time together and we pray and we'd ask God to help, right everybody? And listen, if you'd like to give something above what you normally give in your giving, if you designate that in your giving hurricane, we'll make sure that there are so many worthy places to help right now directly, so we will, we will help people as we have the resources and are able to do that. But if you'd like to give at the end towards that, you're more than welcome to do that. But I just thought it'd be a good place to start praying together, asking God help, right? So can we pray together? Yes. Father, I thank you that the name of the Lord is a high tower and the righteous run into it and they're safe. And the Bible says if two of us will agree on earth as touching anything, it'll be done by our Father which is in heaven. So today we think about people that lost loved ones today and their, heart, their hearts are hurting so badly. I pray that you would comfort those that are hurting. People lost houses, businesses, they lost everything. I pray, God, that you would comfort those that are hurting all over this nation in so many different places right now, devastated by the storm. God, I think about those that are in harm's way right now that are isolated, alone, and perhaps can't communicate or connect with anybody. God, we need your help. God, would you please send your angels to protect and watch over and help people all over in times of needs right now? Would you quicken people and give them creativity and wisdom and sensitivity to your spirit where they need to go and what they need to do to help people in need? Father, we are asking that our leaders on a national level, state levels, county levels, city levels, that they would all work together for the glory of God to help people right now that politics would be put aside and people's needs would be represented and that God, you would just do miracles through people's hands and feet today. God, please show your love and your mercy and your kindness to so many people that are hurting. And Lord, we come to you as the people of God, your people, your sons and your daughters, just crying out to you for them. And God, I pray what the devil meant for harm, somehow you'd turn it around for good. And that many, many people would come into the kingdom and give their lives to Jesus. Lord, you're the only one we can run to in times of need. We look to you. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. So thank you, God, that we can pray when we're hurting and we need help and you listen and you care. Bless those today that are in need, we pray in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. If you agree with me, say amen. Come on, amen. Thank God for... Thank God you listened to prayer. Thank God you're with us today. Ooh, I don't know about you, but that sure feels a lot better when we pray. 
always remember you're not hopeless as long as you can pray. <laughs> Anything can happen. Amen, everybody? Well, this morning, uh, we have the joy of praying for Dr. Peter Gammon and his team. They're going to be starting next week at Celebration High School, a church, the King's Church. And we're super excited for them. And I want to pray a blessing over them today. It's been such a joy to have you, Dr. Gammon, with us on Sundays and get to have a short space of time before you started your church. And you've been a blessing and we're grateful for you. And we just want to speak God's blessings over them. They're, they're part of extension of what we're doing and we, we just want to bless them. So Dr. Gammons, would you come and your team, would you, those of you that are coming to plant with him, come on, let them know you appreciate them and love them today. Come on, yeah, come up here, come with me, yeah. Come on, if somebody get me a microphone too. Thank you, Seika, I appreciate you. Anybody else on the team, don't get stage fright if you're here, come on. Come on down. <laughs> Not to embarrass you. But we wanna pray for them and ask God's blessing on them all today. Yeah, make your way on the stage. Come on up here. Yeah, come on up here. Those of you that are watching online or different parts of the world, Dr. Gammons is starting a church in Kissimmee, Florida, or Celebration, Florida, and uh, starting next week. So we're excited to pray for them and ask God's blessing. Look at this good-looking group, everybody. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. What do you want to say, Dr. Gammon? Uh, thank you ever so much. I want to. I want to thank the pastors that have been such an inspiration to me. You know, uh, I planned to start in January, but it would have been the wrong time to have started. Having spent time here and been part of the church here, I've learned a lot from you. I passed it before, but it's a new season and it's a new day, isn't it? And so, praise the Lord. I speak God's blessing on you all here and believe for multiplication and for the next stage of blessing. So, Amen. and so. Um, this is part of the team that's with me. Victoria's heading up the children's work. And uh, I thank God for the team that he's given me. I always, my, I always uh, Melanie's basically running everything. Jenny's gonna be working with the toddlers. Bob and Alan have been working with me over 20 years. Uh, um, Bob's mum and dad worked with me before that. And uh, so they, 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 they just do everything else. <laughs> they do everything. I, I wrote, if you look at our website, uh, it's mykings.church. Uh, I described Alan, I said, uh, drive it, repair it, build it, make it. <laughs> That's what he does. And so this is part of the team. Part of the team couldn't be with us today, but yeah, thank you ever so much. And, and fascinating, most of my team live in Claremont anyway, so it's, it's, it's great. If you know, any, of them, all, if you know anybody near Claremont, or, or near Claremont, near Celebration, please tell them, because we, we want to see them thrive and grow and do great things for the kingdom. Amen, everybody? That's, wh that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Ce Celebration in Kissimmee area. It's like 25 minutes from here. To, to where we're meeting so and then 25 minutes from that on to to lakeland so we're really taking this area for jesus amen can we pray for them jesus thank you for this wonderful group of people and thank you that they have a heart to do something for god lord would you bless the work of their hands would you use them for the glory of god would you give them wisdom in their areas of, that they're working in? Would you send laborers across their path to continue to help them? And would you send the people? We pray many, many people would give their lives to Jesus through this church. We pray many, many people would have an experience with God, that people would be touched, people would be healed, divorces would be stopped, marriages would be healed, families would be restored, miracles would take place. So God, as a church body, we speak a blessing over this group today. Thank you for their hunger and their desire to do something for you, Jesus. Lord, we wanna to touch the world for you and it starts one place at a time. So we speak the divine blessing of heaven. We speak the blessing from this house over this next house. And Lord, we thank you for them. We love them and we pray strength over them and 
May your power be with them. May the favor of God go before them. Let them do great things for your glory, we pray today. We bless them now as a people of this house in Jesus' name. Come on, if you agree, may say a hearty amen. amen. Come on, amen. Thank you, and, Jesus. And special prayers from you, please. For the mail drop this week, we have 20,000 invitations, personalized invitations, going out to the 20,000 closest homes. So believe that that's going to be effective. Favor and, and the blessing amen. of the Lord. God bless you guys. God bless you. Thank you so much. We speak God's blessing Thank over you. Thank you for everything that you do. Mm. Hold on, I'm giving them all hugs. <laughs> God bless you guys. God bless you, man. Come on, everybody. Give them a God bless you guys. Love you guys. Wow. Here we go, huh? That's exciting. We have a heart to plant many churches for the kingdom, and we're grateful to be able to be a part of that. Amen, everybody? That good stuff. All right. Are you ready for Jonah? Part, this is it. Part four here. This has been four parts. Week one, Jonah one was about Jonah disobeying God and running. If you're running in an area, don't run. Put your roots down and do what God's telling you to do. That's what we learned from week one, number one. So many people are running in life. Don't run. Put your roots down. Get done what you need to do. Be obedient to God. Be humble. Do what God wants you to do, right? Amen? Yeah. Just checking. Week two, we learned that we can praise God even in the belly of a whale. Yeah. Remember, he was praising God and praying three days and three nights, and no matter what we've got going on, we can thank God for what he's done in our lives. There's something to praise God about, right? Week three, we saw Jonah preach to Nineveh, and 120,000 people repent, get their life right with God, and they fast and pray to God. It's a beautiful story that we see. And I'd like to pick up Jonah 3.10 and then jump into chapter 4. It says this, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. Come on, that's a hallelujah moment, right? A whole city. Can you imagine one of the worst cities in your mind and all of them giving their lives to Christ? That would be amazing, wouldn't it? God, do it again, right, everybody? God, do it again in the earth. And then there was chapter 4, verse number 1. But to Jonah... This seemed, somebody help me out. Very wrong, and he became angry. That deserves a half tilt. The city got right with God, and Jonah thinks that's very wrong, and he's angry. Now, could we agree this is a big win for God for 120,000 people to turn to God and try to do the right thing. Yeah. That's a big win. If Larry King were alive, how many know Jonah would be interviewed? <laughs> if, if he'd lived today, how many know he'd be on all the Christian magazines, yeah. all the Christian talk shows, yeah. he'd be the who's who, <laughs> the new thing in Christianity, yes or no, yes. okay? At least in our culture in America, it'd be all over the place. And, and so it would be amazing. And then, then Jonah would be setting up revival meetings all over the world. In the U.S., he'd be in Phoenix or Detroit or Dallas or Orlando or wherever country you are. He'd be in all the prominent cities because he's Jonah, the guy who helped 120,000 people come to the Lord. But that's not... The situation, if you actually look at the Hebrew, the word angry means a man on fire with anger. That's interesting wording. I think this is so bad, Jonah needs to go see Dr. Phil. I mean, this is, this is, this is some, he's got some serious issues. Verse three, he he prayed to the Lord. I, I, I need you to hear 
Jonah's prayer. I need you to hear this. He, so, verse 2, he prayed to the Lord, isn't this what I said, Lord? When I was still at home, that is what I tried to forestall, or I tried to stall by fleeing to Tarshish. Let me stop here for a second. He's saying, I knew how you were going to handle this. And I tried to delay going on this trip to Nineveh because I knew you were going to do this. And I decided to go the other way because I know who you are. Personally, I'm feeling a little lightning in my feelings here. I'm not like wanting to be next to Jonah if he's praying that way. I'm like wanting to get a little lightning distance between the two of us here. Look what he says. I knew, like he did, God did something wrong. I knew that you're a gracious and compassionate God. Like, I'm good with that so far. You're, you're slow to anger. Praise the Lord. Abounding in love. Hallelujah. A God who relents from sending calamity. Like, what did I miss? That all sounds amazing. And Jonah's praying about this to God, and he's ticked off or angry about it. You know, Jonah has an interesting prayer life. Can we say that? I mean, before this, we see him praying in the belly of a whale. And now we see him, he's ticked off at God for sparing the people. He kind of seems like he has a crisis-driven prayer life. Anybody understand crisis-driven prayer life? I mean, how many know it's okay to wake up in the morning going, I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all my blessings. Instead of it's always a need or a want or do this for me, do that for me. And I'm not saying don't pray. That's about things you need or crisis you're going through. But I'm saying prayer is bigger than our needs. It's communing and connecting with God. Amen, everybody? So we find Jonah is angry at God for, give, for forgiving the people of Nineveh. He's angry about that. How many know even barbarians, God thinks, should get a second chance? Aren't you glad that God gave you and me a second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on chance? I'm grateful for that today. And it seems to me like Jonah is harboring unforgiveness and bitterness and doesn't want to let go of his resentment. That's what it seems like to me. And I started thinking about Jesus this morning and how he was slapped, spit on, ridiculed, mocked. He had, he had, he had a whip on his back. He had nails in his hands and his feet. And he looks at the Father in some of his last moments and he says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Showing the ultimate example of grace and love and kindness and mercy. You know, in Matthew 6, 14, it says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And so it's imperative or important that we forgive and get rid of our resentment and bitterness so forgiveness can flow in our lives today. It's so important. I was thinking about Colossians 3, and I want to start with verse 12. It says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. Forgive one another if any of you, it says there, has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. I've been forgiven a lot. How about you? So we got to forgive a lot. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And let the peace of Christ dwell or roll in your heart since 
your members of one body, you are called to peace and to be thankful, it says there. And let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. It is hard, it is hard to have unforgiveness and bitterness when you are praising God, thanking God, and reading the word of God. It's really, you gotta work really hard at it. So if you're struggling with that, start praising God thanking God and reading the Word of God and forgiveness and the bitterness will flow out of your system more and more and more. Amen, Amen everybody. That, that's the truth from God's Word. So Jonah is having this issue back and forth and the Lord replies to him. And here's what the Lord says. Here, here, get this. He says, is it right for you to be angry? I've been a Christian for 50 years, and every time I've heard the voice of God ask me a question, it was not for God to get information from Rick Van Wagner. You know, he's like God, creator of heaven and earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And typically, when a question's given to me, I re usually have an attitude of, Lord, whatever I did, I repent of my attitude. Please forgive me because I know this dialogue is going somewhere and typically it's me having to make something right. Good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you're watching. <laughs> Verse number five, Jonah had gone out and sat down at the place east of the city, it says there. And there he made himself a shelter. He sat in its shade and he waited to see what would happen to the city. <laughs> God forgave the city, and, and he's got, like, got his popcorn and, and drinks. I'm like, yeah, what's going to happen? You knucklehead, God already told, knucklehead, let me describe that for those of you watching out of the area. You, that's crazy thinking. You're thinking crazy that you would want to watch the destruction of a city when God already told you he didn't want to destroy the city because they did the right thing. But Jonah's like this, get me the popcorn. It's like watching a movie. Is that crazy to anybody else? This is crazy. So he's hanging out. Verse six, it says, then the Lord provided a leafy plant and made it grow over Jonah to give shade to his head to see, to, to ease his, dis, his uh, discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered. And when the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind. All Floridians completely understand that. No explanation necessary. And the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint, it says there. And then he wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. Let's go through this for a minute. His emotions seem to be going like this. I mean, he's high and low. I mean, this guy, this guy's got a lot of emotion going on. Jonah doesn't seem to be content. Jonah doesn't seem to be excited. Jonah doesn't seem to be thankful about much of anything. And you see this pattern of frustration that he displays over and over. And, you know, God loves Jonah a lot, doesn't he? God loved Nineveh and saved 120,000 people, but now God's trying to save Jonah. What do you mean? God loved him so much, he allowed the vine to show up, the worm to show up, and the scorching wind to show up. Does everybody hear that? Sometimes God allows things in our lives to check us, to make us rethink about our attitudes and our emotions and how we're being led in matters that aren't honorable and pleasing to God. And, and so God's trying to not just save a city, he's also trying to save and touch his servant Jonah with his attitude. 
Because he's like, I knew you were going to do this to me. You're going to lead me out here, and then you're gonna, I'm going to preach, and then all these people are going to get right. Yeah. But this is, this is what's going on with him. And, and so, verse 9, God said to Jonah, here, God asked him another question. Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And Jonah, Jonah says, it is. Can you see the conversation? I'm so angry, I wish I were dead. Now, for some reason, I kind of visualize one of those, they call, we call it elephant ear plants. You know, they got the big, I kind of visualize one of those growing up out of the ground over his head. You know, that, that's a, maybe that's a Floridian thing, I don't know. But I, I envision this big plant over his head and he's like, this is good. And then the worm comes and eats the, starts to eat the thing and then it sags down and now it's not over his head anymore. And then this wind, this hot wind's blowing on him and he's just getting madder and madder. And, and you know, you hear people say, don't press my button. I mean, God will let your button get pressed so you can grow up and I can grow up and we can get better in those areas. I'm not saying it's fun. I'm not even saying it's exciting, but if you wanna grow and mature in Jesus, your button gonna get pressed. That's not proper English, but you understood exactly what I meant by it. And so Jonah is suicidal over a plant. I wanna die, I can't live anymore over a plant. And he didn't put seed in the ground. He didn't cultivate the ground. He didn't do anything to help that thing grow, but yet he's angry about it. And I'm, I'm just telling you, sometimes the Lord will allow things to happen just to check our attitudes with stuff. And he doesn't allow things to come against us to harm us. He lets these things come to us to grow us. Okay, he wants to grow us for his glory. So life at this point for Jonah is about who do you think it's about? Thank you. It's about Jonah. Did everybody hear that? Life's all about Jonah. You shouldn't have done this, God, or you should have done this, God, or this should have happened, God, or this should. It's all about Jonah. And you and I know that the Bible says you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself, right? And life isn't about us. It's about God and other people. Somebody say amen, right? Amen. That, that's what life's all about. But for Jonah, it's his anger. It's his unforgiveness. And I would even add his comfort. It's about all about these things. And life can't just be all about us to be a good lived life. It's about God and it's about people. Life is about serving God and serving people, right? So look at verse 10. And the Lord said, you've been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow, and it sprang up overnight and it died overnight. <laughs> and I, sh look what God says, and I should have, I should not have concern for the great city of Nineveh in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and also many animals? He's saying, Jonah, you're more concerned about a plant that grew one day and died one day than you are 120,000 people and even their animals? You're more concerned about your plant than you are them? God's saying to him, Life is about Nineveh, not you. Did everybody hear that? So let me tell you who Nineveh is in our lives. It's every person outside our front door. That's Nineveh. It's the people we come in contact with around us. People are hurting and they need God's help and they need God's compassion. Here's an interesting thought. God said, they don't know their left hand from their right. He's not talking about directions. He's talking about they don't get it on spiritual things. 
They don't understand anything. And so God directs Jonah to go help those people who can't tell spiritually their left hand from their right hand. Let's get in the weeds a little bit here. Why would God send an imperfect person like Jonah to go share a perfect message with those people from Nineveh? I, I have to be honest with you. If Jonah sat in my office and we had a dialogue and I saw the selfish nature inside of him and his emotions that were so up and down, I got to be honest with you. I'd be like, Jonah, we should probably hang out a little bit and work on some stuff before you go to Nineveh because I'm not sure you're ready for Nineveh. I, I'm just being transparent with you. I, I'm not God. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad I don't have that responsibility. It just seems like my responsibility I have is enough. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, some of you have a dog, and that, that's enough for you, right? And I, 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 life is a lot sometimes. And so I'm glad I don't have to oversee that too, but I, I would have had trouble with that. And so God sent an imperfect person anyways to share the gospel so 120,000 people would say yes to God. God will, you need to hear this, God will use imperfect people to share with people because they don't know their right hand from their left spiritually. Because he loves that group hearing the gospel so much, he will use imperfect people that have crazy stuff in their life going on. I'm not loving it, but I'm reading it. Everybody with me? So when you, I mean, so many people go back, I can't believe so-and-so did this and this. I, I get it. I don't like it either. It gives Christianity a bad name when ministers misrepresent the gospel and go, do, go get on the crazy train and do things without integrity. I get ticked off just like you do. Why is that happening? Because people don't know their left hand from their right hand. And God wants people to be spared from destruction and hear the good news from an imperfect vessel because it's a perfect message. Anybody understand what I'm saying here to you today? So, let's bring it home to me and you. I'm imperfect, you're imperfect. Don't let your imperfections stop you from sharing the good message of Jesus. Listen, if we have to wait until you're perfect or I'm perfect, how many know no one's going to hear? Let's just be transparent with each other. No one's going to get it. So I'm going to go ahead and stumble along with my humanity and not try to act like I'm something that I'm not. Hi. My name's Rick, and I'm trying to be your friend this morning here today. Just be you. I'm not excusing sin. I'm not excusing bad behavior. Everybody hear that? Listen, there's some stuff I got to keep moving on. Okay, so you too. I'm not excusing that and giving you a hall pass. All I'm saying is God will take you where you're at and just try the best you can every day by the grace of God to just keep getting more and more like Jesus. That's all I'm telling you guys. Don't stop. Touch somebody's life. Make a difference. Don't let condemnation and guilt tell you how terrible you are. Be the best you can be. Be determined to grow in your faith. Be quick to forgive, quick to move forward, and watch what the grace of God will do in your life and people just like the city of Nineveh because there's a whole bunch of people that don't know their left hand from their right that hear, need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen, everybody. Come on. I want to pray for you this morning, if I could, please. Father in heaven, we ask your richest blessings on your people today. Some people are running. They're scared. They're afraid. 
I pray that people would stop running. They'd put their roots deep down. They'd grow in their relationship with you and other people. They'd face the things they need to face. I speak a, a peace over you, a boldness over you that feel like you're running today. I pray for those that, Father, perhaps are just being hard on themselves and they're not giving themselves grace. I pray that you'd help them to have peace again. As they follow you and pursue you, give them peace again. Lord, I pray that you would lay on our hearts who, just like the city of Nineveh, we're supposed to talk to. Who are we supposed to share Jesus with? God, I pray that you touch people today. Lord, see our imperfections, see our needs and help us to grow, help us to mature, help us to be the best we can be to represent you well to the people in our lives like the city of Nineveh. We understand there's people that don't know their left hand from their right spiritually. They don't know anything about spiritual matters. Oh God, help us to be a blessing to the world around us. Help us to realize life is bigger than just ourselves, but it's living for the glory of God and to serve others. I speak heaven's divine blessing on you. God, touch your people all over, all over the world right now, in this service right now, watching online. I bless you. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray. If you agree with that prayer, say a hearty amen this morning. Amen. Come on, amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus, that you still listen to prayer. You're slow to anger, and you are kind. Could we just continue in this posture of prayer? Whether you're watching on the television network, online, or in this room, would you just pray that right now the Holy Spirit would touch hearts? and that people would give their lives to Jesus. There's people watching and you feel like you're so far away from God. Can I tell you that God's closer than you think you are, you, you think he is? And I envision his arms open wide to you. And he's ready, he saved the whole city of barbarians in Nineveh. And I'm telling you, God loves people and he wants to save you today. Let's talk about where we start in that spiritual journey because some people don't know spiritually from one hand or another how that works. Well, first you've got to believe that Jesus is God's son and that he died on the cross and the Bible says he rose again three days later and he's alive right now in a place called heaven. If you believe that, I've got good news for you. God's Holy Spirit is putting faith inside of your heart already. That, that's like the seal of heaven just telling you God's working on you. Now you got to take the next step where you say yes to Jesus. God's already given you revelation and understanding. It's your turn to say yes to him. In a moment, I'll lead a prayer. I'll help you with the words. All you got to do is mean it from your heart. And there's people today all over that you'd say, I've never given my life to Jesus. This is your moment to say yes to him. There's another group of people that you've never, or you, you've had, you have asked Christ in your life, but you're not living right now. And your heart is convicted and it's telling you, get things right. Maybe you're running like Jonah. Maybe you're disobedient. I don't know, but if your heart is convicted, don't live like that. Just get right with God. Say yes to him. We call that rededicate your life or hit a reset button spiritually. Again, there's people who have never given their lives to Christ. This is your moment. And people, you feel compelled to rededicate your life to God. Don't miss this moment. God is a God of compassion, just like he was for people in the city of Nineveh, he's a God of compassion today still for you and me. Now, I can't see everybody that's online, but God can. And I'm gonna ask in this moment, whether you're online or watching or in this building, 
You say, Pastor Rick, I want to get my life right with Jesus. I want, to, I want to give my life to Jesus for the first time. Or I feel compelled to rededicate my life to God. If that's you, I want you to boldly put your hand up right now. No one's looking around. They're not making a spectacle. But I want to see who I'm praying for today. Yep, I'll pray for you. Yep, 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 I'll pray for you. Yep, I'll pray for you. Just looking around the building. Yes, I see your hand. Yep, see your hand just going around the building. Thank you, Jesus. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Yes, 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 yes. How about in the balcony? Yes, see hands all in the balcony. Come on, in the balcony, anybody else? I don't, don't want to miss anybody. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lots of people today. Could we pray this prayer together, everybody? And if you raised your hands online or from the television network, God saw you. Would you pray this? Can we pray this all together? Could we say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for me and that you rose again and you're alive right now. Please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Change my life. Help me to be the person you want me to be and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. You were just guided through the salvation prayer. And if you gave your heart to Jesus today, you have made the best decision ever. You may be wondering, what's next? Well, we have you covered. Scan the code on the screen to learn about how to grow in your relationship with Jesus. If you'd like to connect with someone personally, you can text FCC Guest to 97000 to connect with our team. Now is the time in our service where we prepare to give our tithes and offerings. If this is your first time tuning in with us, please feel no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. Now, if you call FCC your church and you want to participate in giving today, you can text FCC Give to 97000 or give securely online at FCCLive.com slash give. I'm going to take this time to pray over our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to worship you in giving. We pray that you bless every gift and every giver. Let it never run dry and let these seeds grow for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like prayer today, text FCC Prayer to 97000 and a member of our prayer team will reach out to you. We weren't made to do life alone, so text us whenever you need prayer. Thanks for joining us for church today. We hope you have the best week ever.